I want you to know the accuser of the brother, Satan, he has been cast down like lion. Imagine this question. Jesus has went to a cross. God sent his son to a cross because he loves us. Unconditionally. Love us. Jesus. All that he went through. And God raised him up from the, from the dead. Because the scripture tells us Satan goes before God. To accuse us. Before God. But do you think Satan is continuing to go to God and accuse us after the fall? What can he tell you? Nothing. Get him to say. Your mouth has been shut. Silence. But the problem is, we don't know. We're treating him or responding to him as if he got power over us. But he doesn't. Amen. This shut his mouth. That's right. Amen. God is no longer counting sin against you. I know that makes some of y'all nervous. Stay with me. Stay with me. Because if he was counting sins against you, the devil is on your back. The devil is sitting on your shoulder, whispering in your ear, look what you say. Look what you tell me. You call yourself a Christian. You think you're a believer? God is mad at you. The whole world is mad at you. He's always whispering in our ears, trying to tell us who we're not. But this tells me who I am. Right. Yeah. Tells me who I belong to. Right. Yeah. I got uh, the victory is right here. Right. This is how we win. Even our faith. We overcome what? The devil by our testimony. By our faith, by our testimony. We overcome him. Because remember when your testimony, what's your testimony still? My testimony used to be about like this here. We're going to get the word in there. How much time here. My testimony used to be like this. How much I smoke. How many women I've chased. How I'm out of the homes. How much money I, 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 I got. How much money I won, stole, whatever I did, you know. But praise be to God. I'm a new person. That was my testimony. But as I began to grow in the knowledge of God, and so were you. Because the testimony we had was about Him. That's the testimony that's going to last to the end of time. So my testimony is to tell you about the goodness of God. It's about the grace of a true and living God. That's the testimony. It's about Jesus. How God loved us from the beginning and sent his son. That is the testimony. Because when you sit here talking about, we can all, got, we all got something in common. Because we're all flesh. But I can't save you and you can't save me. But I know somebody who can. And so do you. And his name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let, let, let me go here for a moment, and I'm going to share this with you, because um, as we look at what God has done and what he's doing, and, and some of us in this room need to hear it this way, so I'm going to just start speaking as the Holy Spirit lead me to speak, amen, amen. because I believe God is saying something to us. Now, how many believers I have in the room right now? Amen, amen, amen. How, how, how many unbelievers do we have in the room who have not, not given the life of Christ? Okay, only a few. Okay, okay, we pray to God. If you're not a believer, before you leave this room, before you leave this room, I pray that you will receive them before you leave this room. Amen? Praise God. So let's, let's go here, let's go here. I am, I am beginning to say to you, what I'm going to say to you tonight is, based on the need of this call, the purpose of this cross. This is the purpose of the cross. I'm going to run through here real quickly. It says, the Bible says in Isaiah that we were a people that were unclean. Unclean, and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We are true up like a leaf 
and like the wind, our sin keeps us away. This is indeed a cross. Outside of Christ, our sin is sweeping us away. We are unrighteous, unholy in the face of God. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. A man's heart is deceitful above, above, above all things and, un, and un, there's no cure, beyond cure. Who can understand it? Man's heart is deceitful. I have to accept that. I have to agree with that. And until we agree with that, we're going to continue to do our thing and go our own way and want everything to mind up with, with the way I want to do it, how I feel, what I say, and how I want to do it, the way I want to do it. You can do it my way or the high way. And God's way is whatever. No, no, no. Your heart is deceitful. My heart is deceitful. Man's heart is deceitful and his heart alone will not submit to God. It's not in his heart to follow after God. His heart is deceitful because of sin. He said all in sin and fall short of the glory of God. So this is the need of the cross. Our heart is deceitful. We are unrighteous, and we all have sin and fallen short of the word of God. So God saw our problem, but he also gave us a solution. Amen. Amen. He saw our need, and he gave us a solution. He saw where the fault was. Man has a fault. He's dead, and he's a new life. When Adam sinned, what came in the world after his sin? Death. And we all have died. So the cross is necessary. The cross is necessary because God, in his heart, is to bring us to a place of life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Amen. Uh, uh, I'll ask this question again. Who are the ones in this room? Have received life. Who has received life in this room? Amen. 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 Salvation is life. If I have received Christ, I have received life. That is the life of God. That is in Christ Jesus. The same life is in the Son, is in the Father. And when we receive the Son, we receive life. Amen. So that is the life of the Father for me. Jesus came on the earth to lay down his life. That he can give his life to us. He gave his life then so we can receive it now. This is spirit. He gave his physical life so we may see his spiritual life. Are you with me? Yeah. So, knowing that this is our problem, but the scripture says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died. While we were sinners, Christ died. And I used to say, okay, so while I was sinning, Christ died. Did Christ die when he was sinning? Anybody over here? Did Christ die when he was sinning? Did, did, did Christ die when anybody over here was sinning? Did Christ die? Okay, let me get some hands. Y'all look at the button. When you were sinning, did Christ die? No? Yes or no? Where you born? Okay, okay. Well, this time. Did Christ die while you were sinning? He goes before we were sinned. So we agree that Christ died before we were sinned, right? Because we were in born. Do we agree? So Christ died before we sinned. But the scripture is declaring at this time, when the writer is writing, or when the Spirit of God gave revelation to what's going on here, he is saying here, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So when the person that witnessed, or the person that, after he resurrected, they're hearing this story. So they said, you need to say, this man who, it was God's love who died while we were sinners. 
So their understanding is, well, you got it, we were sinners, this is God's will that He's demonstrating to us. Wow. So when they respond to Jesus as being the love of God, they're seeing their sins being forgiven. We talk about a Jewish people. They're seeing their sins being forgiven in Jesus based on being forgiven in the daily uh, sacrifices of their atonement. So they see their sins being forgiven in Christ. But for us, when do we see? When do we see our sins forgiven? Now or then? So without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. That's right. Right? Without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So when I am hearing the story about Jesus who died on the cross for me, that God so loved the world that he gave his son to die on the cross for me, God was telling me in his death, your sins have been forgiven. So at that point, I have the opportunity to either receive it or reject it. Now, on receiving forgiveness is to receive Christ. Just the way as you receive eternal life, you receive the forgiveness of God. You didn't receive eternal life and then receive forgiveness later. Right? We know that, right? You didn't get saved and then later on you got forgiven. Because we just, we just read that forgiveness came before we got here. That he died while we were sinners. We weren't sinners because we weren't born. But when we were born, we were born what? Sinners. Because we had not yet heard the gospel message about God's grace, Amen. about his love for us. So, what we're saying is that to receive this life, I didn't receive life and then receive forgiveness later. The reason why I received the life, because he told me I was forgiven. Why did you come to Jesus for life? Because first of all, I found out that he died for my sins. Am I making sense? Okay, I found out that he died for my sins. But I found out he died for my sins was to did not come to receive salvation. Because your sins have been forgiven. That is the gospel. So now, now that I've received Christ, forgiveness is found in him. He's in my life. I'm in his life. I'm in table. They don't get now. We've been baptized. By, by one spirit, by one faith, we be baptized into this spirit. And then we're one with God, we're one with Christ and the Holy Ghost. So now that I have this life, I've been saved apart from this flesh. You've been saved apart from your flesh. Touch yourself. Touch yourself. Go ahead, touch yourself. Pinch yourself. You've been saved apart from this. This didn't save you. Yeah, he didn't save you by you. He saved you by, by his spirit. Flesh and blood is going back where? To the dirt. Flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. It's going back to the dirt. Matter of fact, we're going to get new bodies. The Bible says we're going to get new bodies. Praise be to God. I thought I'm going to buzz about it this time. I don't want to talk about it this time. But, yeah. but, 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 but see, we're going to get new bodies. But listen. So, now that I've been saved, y'all say y'all saved now, y'all say y'all saved, but y'all saved. You got this eternal life. This is who's working. This eternal life is working in me. So now that this eternal life is working in me, now I'm on a journey. I'm on a journey to know God. I'm on a journey to understand God and in this relationship that I'm on. But in this journey, because I'm living in this sinful world, I've been saved by the Holy Ghost. I'm a child of God, but I'm in this sinful world, and in this body. But this body is not who we are. We're born in the Spirit. We're new creatures in Christ. Amen? Amen. So, but why am I on this journey? We got the enemy trying to whisper in one ear. Remember that cartoon we had the devil and the angel over here? Yeah. Some of y'all should be on now that cartoon. You know, yeah. the angel over here, don't do it, don't do it. And the devil over here, oh, it's all right, it's all right. The devil and the angel fight with it. And I used to laugh at that. 
So I realized, you know what, that is real. There's one on this side, and there's one on this side. So whoever you yield your members to, Will you heal your members to Come on, your body. You can be healing your members to the devil. I, I ain't going to sugarcoat it. You can, <laughs> you can heal your members to the devil of his ways and his thoughts and fall into sin and mischief and everything else coming right along with it. Or we can hear what God is saying on the, this side and walk in the righteousness or what he's called me to right walk in. You understand what I'm saying? So, so everybody, I, we are what we are today because of the choices we have made. We are where we are right now behind the choices we made yesterday. Do you hear what I'm saying? So if I want to end up somewhere different than where I am right now, I got to start making better choices. I, I don't know where, that, where, where this is coming from, but I'm just going to say what the Spirit tells me to say. If I am ending up in the same place I am today, it's because I'm making the same choices. God, don't let me make the same choices. By the renewing of my mind, my choices are changing. Because I don't want the heartache, I don't want the hardship, I don't want the setback, I don't want the foolish folks, I don't want, the, I don't want to be a slave to nothing. I'm tired of being a slave. I don't care what it is. I don't want to be a slave to nobody but him. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Okay, okay, okay. So move, move right along. I don't know why we parked here, but somebody must need that. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid down his life for friends. Who laid down his life? Jesus laid down his life for us. He says here, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have every, uh, everlasting life. When Jesus died on the, not when he died, when he was on the cross, he said, uh, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. In the scriptures, we see Jesus forgiving a whole lot of people on different occasions. He's forgiving people. And we know that he was the Lamb of God, right? Jesus being the Lamb of God. So he has the power to walk and forgive us. He has the power to forgive. But based on the forgiveness back in his time, without, without, because we know without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. So how is he forgiving people in, in a blood being shed? How is he forgiving folks in a blood being shed? Well, he's a lamb. That's what I came for. That's what my body was given. My body was given that should be forgiven. It was poured out for you that you be forgiven. But I was raised from the dead. That have power over death. That you may come alive. By his resurrection, we'd be made alive. We're forgiven through his death, but made alive through his resurrection. Right. So now that we're alive through the power of the resurrection, we no longer, no longer will die in the face of God. And this body will shed, but we are just like Jesus is. We are spirit, an eternal spirit in the hands of God. So this is what I want to kill tonight also in our thinking. The journey you on it's not a journey of a test to see whether you pass or not. This is not a journey to see, I mean, I mean, receiving Christ is not the journey you own at the mission. Whether you graduate or not. Whether you make it through the program or not. That's not the journey of eternal life. That's not the journey of God got us on. See whether we're going to pass or not. Once we've been saved, guess what? We're saved. Yes, I am bold enough to say it because it's true. It is written, I write these things unto you, that you may believe that you have eternal life. Amen. That you may know that you have eternal life. Because on this journey, if I feel 
that I have forfeited the life that God has given me, something is wrong. Something is wrong with my faith. Something is wrong with my faith. If I'm on this journey, say I end up here. Say I end up at the mission. On my journey. How many of us, how many of us received Christ in high school? How many, how many of us received Christ in the young adult, 20 in your 20s, 25, 23, 24? Amen. How many of us received Christ in our 30s? Okay. How many received Christ in our 40s? 50. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody 50? Amen. So we have, we have different, okay. amen. Praise God. So we have different groups. But I want to go to the youngest who I said. If I received Christ in my, in my younger days and, and I'm on this journey and I felt that I have lost the life that he's given me, something was wrong with my faith. Something was wrong with what I received. Or I didn't grow in the knowledge of what God has said to me concerning life. But you hear what I'm saying? The faith that we have responded to is the gospel. The gospel without faith is not a gospel at all. What secured my salvation? What is it that God has done that secured me with him? See, if I think I'm secure in my salvation based on what I'm doing, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail my confidence, my hope, my ship, you know what I'm saying? If I'm holding on to what God has given me based on me crossing every team, God and God, I'm setting myself up for failure. Our hope is in Him based on Him going to this cross and being raised from the dead. My hope, my whole life relies on Him. See, because the true response to love is thanksgiving. If they can say thanksgiving. And see, thanksgiving turns into service. Thanksgiving turns into service of us loving one another. True love causes a response of thanksgiving. And thanksgiving turns into service about us loving one another. So faith, the faith that we respond to in the gospel has given us assurance of confidence of who we are in Christ and what we possess in Christ. Anything short of that is not the faith that, of the gospel at all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if I'm walking in this journey, having this journey, you've been there and done that. When I felt I, when I felt that I was, it had all ended. I messed up. What is it that I need to do? Let me start over. You know how many times I started over? I know some of y'all heard this story before. Let me tell you again. <laughs> you know how many times I started over? How many times did you start over? The gospel message is not a start over message. The faith is not a start over message. Amen. Because, and then I, I said, well, this one time, uh, uh, we see the gospel as a second chance. The mission might give you a second chance. Third and fourth can give you a second chance, a third or fourth chance. That's good. Because our behavior sometimes calls for that. But you didn't come to God for the second chance. You came to God for life. He didn't give you a life on the second chance. Praise be to God. He gave me a life that will never, never, ever, he will never, ever take the life that he's given me. To take the life that he's given you is to take the life of his son. To reject you is to reject Christ. To walk away from us is to walk away from his son. Amen. He sees us like he sees his son. Perfect, holy, without sin, without fault. We came from darkness to light in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're not walking the line and hope. And, oh Lord, let me see. Let me see. Let me start over. 
you see. No, they're not redoing this thing. We're grown. And guess what? We all have tripped up. We all have done some things. But we all need to know we have an attitude. His name is Jesus. Who's already gone before us. Get up, dust yourself off, and keep it moving. Iron sharp and iron. We are our brother's keeper. Ain't, no, ain't nobody in here perfect. But we in the perfect one. And he sees us perfect. This perfect, let me do this perfect for a moment. Because I, if somebody come up here and change the time on this, that's how you're good at me, I see. Let me deal with this perfect for a minute. He said he has made us perfect. He has made our conscience perfect. Now, what I'm saying is, I can't call you perfect. This has to come through revelation and understanding. But I'm going to give it to you where the scripture is telling us what it is. But when you read the scripture, that's when the Holy Spirit gives you revelation for what you're reading because you, you would understand what God says about us and what he's done. But this perfect, I'm not talking about perfect in your conduct because none of us have ever been perfect in our conduct. But that doesn't give me the pleasure that you know, I'm going to do what I want to do. No, no. I understand something. I thank God that he knows my flesh like I know it. And he never do it. But the perfect is not the perfect in your behavior. It's the perfect of your conscience. The blood is to perfect our conscience. To let us know that the sin has been removed. God has forgiven us totally. Let me take it to you this way. When they brought the sacrifices to the high priest, they had to bring a lamb that was without blemish. It had to be a perfect lamb, without spot or wrinkle, and they presented it to the high priest. And if they accepted that lamb, he was, he was sacrificed, and the, the offering was sacrificed, and, and the blood was shed, and they were taken to the Holy Holy. So, our conscience is just as perfect as the Lamb. Our conscience is to become as just as perfect as the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? Jesus is the Lamb. So his blood is to perfect our conscience, knowing this, that as far as the east is from the west, so is your sin. And God is not counting against you in death. That is to draw you near. This is why we repent. Because you've heard that your sins have been forgiven. Amen. That is to give you the intelligent opportunity to change your mind. Come away from this deceitful heart. This wicked world that's on its way to hell. Everything going down in the ship. When it's all over, it's going to be over. But I'm going to tell you, you don't want to be here when it's over. You want to be in the hands of God. Amen. Because money can't save us, women can't save us, power can't save us. It ain't going to happen. Look around you. Ain't nothing going on but death. But that is to clear our conscience. He's given us the opportunity to make, a, to make an intelligent decision. To repent, turn from your wicked way. And I'm going to tell you, the wicked way, sometimes look at the wicked way of what I'm doing. Your wicked way of thinking. Repent. The message is to repent. Turn from what you're thinking. It's dealing with your conscience so you can receive Jesus. Because if we don't, I used to say this, I'm going to say this in my clothing. I used to say this. When I was uh, in the field of evangelism and sharing the word of God, that you have a choice. You can choose heaven or you can choose hell. How many of us heard that? You can choose heaven and you can choose hell. So when we heard that, 
some of us say, well, I'm not ready to choose yet. Did you do that? Say, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, right now, I'm, I'm just not ready to choose. You know. We can gave you the gospel message. Make sure. You can choose heaven, or you can choose hell. What the Lord told me? It's not true. Oh, what? Oh, no. Say, Lord, that's not true. Your choice is not you can choose heaven, you can choose hell. You got one choice. That's heaven. Hell is where you stand. Sorry, we're already condemned. You were born condemned. And He is our Savior. So we got one choice. Ain't no limbo. So, if we're telling people that the gospel got you in the middle and you can choose to go to hell or you can choose to go to heaven, that's not true. The wrath of God remains on you if you do not choose heaven twice. You remain spiritually dead. You have not been awakened to the spirit of the living God. All oh, the thanks be to God and His mercy, His grace that He waited on me. Are you hear what I say? Because if you die tonight without Jesus, as you said, this is not a scare tactic. This is truth. If you die tonight and Jesus Christ is not your Lord, I'm not talking about a Listen, I'm not talking about a person, his ethnic background, uh, what side of the track he came on, was he a Jew or was he a this or was he that. I'm telling you this here. It's been testified about who he is. He's God. But if you die in your sins, it'll be your sins that is taking you to a devil's head. But if not prepared for it. But the hope is, is that we respond to a loving God, a loving Father. He's a good, good Father. That's who you are. That's who you are. You're a loving Father. You got the the song. That's who He is. In spite of, He's a good Father. In spite of my mess. In spite of my mess, mess, oh mess. He's still the father. Why are you doing the same? Amen. Go ahead and stand up. Stand with me. Hallelujah.